Okay, now that we have our sketch good and finalized, now we're gonna go up to this green check mark in the top right hand corner and click finish sketch. And this will pull us back into our original workspace. And what we're gonna do next is bring it from the 2D into the 3D world. And to do that, uh, first thing we want to do is actually change our view. So we're gonna go up here to the view cube and click on that house button. And this will give us a three dimensional view of our sketch. Anytime you're turning something from a 2D into a 3D object, uh, you wanna have a little bit more of a three dimensional view. Uh, if you imagine looking down at a circle and it extrudes up an inch or a mile, if you always have the exact same downwards view, you have no idea how tall it is because you don't have that perspective. So you always wanna go in for a three dimensional view anytime you're working in the 3D world. Now we can go up to the create in our solid section. And we've got a bunch of different tools on here, but really the ones that I use uh, most often are going to be extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft. These ones that I use very, very often that we'll be touching on today. Uh, but right now, let's start off in extrude. Extrude basically just means I've got a 2D shape and I want to bring it up into the 3D realm. So we can click this or you can click E on your keyboard. And again, we have got a little dialog box. And so we'll go into what all this means. So the profile where it's saying, yep, it's highlighted. So it's going, hey, click something. That is, what do you want to be extruded? So we wanted to uh, just extrude this section. So I'm just gonna click that. And then it says one selected, that's all good. And now we've got a couple options up here. We've got this little arrow that we can click and drag upwards and downwards. And you can see we have that little circular cutout right there. So you can bring this as tall as we want. And as I'm doing this, I want you to notice the distance over here. So these, this little kind of, well, human design portion where you go, hey, I'm just checking to see how big I want it to be, no specific value. You can then go, eh, that looks about right. And then go, okay, it was 12 millimeters. Great. Uh, but if you know exactly how large it wants to be, let's say uh, we wanted this to be 20 millimeters, then I can just type 20 and it pops up to that perfect value. Uh, the other thing that I want you guys to notice on here is we have this little circular, uh, little ring right here. And this is gonna be associated with the taper angle. So as I move this, it'll either pull in or I can have it extrude outwards. Uh, this taper, it is uh, usually more associated with people that do plastic injection molding where you always need a little draft angle. Uh, that's why little small containers always have little angles to them. So then when the plastic injection part actually gets pulled out of the mold, uh, air can rush into it very, very easily. But we're gonna leave this as zero degrees uh, for right now. So the starting portion, this is our profile plane. Well, that's exactly where we want it to pull up from. That's just fine. Our direction, we can say, yep, this is one-sided, or I can say, hey, pull it up from the top and from the bottom as well. Uh, I don't really need that. We could also say symmetric. So if I pull from the top, it also moves from the bottom as well. Uh, but we'll just keep it as one-sided today. Uh, we'll put that back to 20 millimeters. Um, and then as soon as I do this and I hit OK, we now have a body pop-up in here. So we've got body one, which is associated with the only 3D objects in our space right now. And we also have something in our uh, timeline as well, which is very, very cool. So we've got our sketch right here at the bottom and we also have uh, our little extrusion right here. Um, if I wanted to go back and change something about that sketch, then I can right click it and then say edit sketch. And then I'm back in that workspace and go, oh, whoops, uh, that was meant to be, I was right the first time, that was meant to be 35. Great, it finished sketch. And then it is all the correct size now. Um, I can also do the exact same thing with my extrusion as well. Don't be afraid to click around uh, and kind of search in what uh, this whole program actually has to offer. Um, but let's kind of play around with some of the other things in here as well. Uh, I wanna play around with Revolve, which is a really cool way that you can make a relatively simple shape and then revolve it around a central axis and make a 360 degree object. Uh, I'm gonna click this plus sign up here. Uh, this is kind of like opening up a new tab on your browser. And as you can see in the little description here on Revolve, uh, we want to make this, well, uh, you can make a little profile 
select a, a central axis and it will revolve something around it. So if I wanted to make something like uh, a torus, uh, which is the mathematical name of a donut, um, then I can say, hey, let's make a little circle over here, put a central axis in the middle and then spin it around. So let's do that. I want to say, let's create a sketch and I want to make it on this front plane right now. I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to put it right there. Let's make it, let's click D on our keyboard, click the circle, pull our dimension away, click again, and let's make this 50 millimeters. That looks good. Um, but one thing I want to do is I want the very origin of my circle and the origin of my grid to be completely level. Well, then I can always use a constraint. So I want to click the very center of my circle and then I'm gonna hold down control on my keyboard and click the origin. Then I'm gonna go up to horizontal and vertical, click that, and basically it has pulled it down. It has said, well, these two points, if you connect a line to them, it's almost horizontal. So we're just gonna make it perfectly horizontal. Um, same thing happened if you pull it up to the top section, it goes, eh, it's almost vertical. Let's go ahead and make it perfectly vertical. So even though I've constrained it, it is still blue, which means it's still undefined. So I can still move it over side to side. So let's give a dimension from the very center to the origin. Let's go hit D on our keyboard again and click the origin. And we already have the middle selected. And let's say, uh, yeah, let's say 60 and then hit enter, great. Hit escape. And then let's make a little central line uh, or an axis for it to spin around. So you can go into the line tool. Let's click the origin, pull up, click again. And I don't really care about making another line. So I'm just gonna click this little check mark right there. There we go, that looks good. But I don't need to make another line. So I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard. And now we don't have that tool anymore. All right, so this is all looking good. Now I'm gonna say finish sketch up here. And I'm gonna go into create and revolve. So it's now got a new dialog box and I only need to put in really two things. I need to say, what is the profile that I'm working on and what is the axis that I'm working on? And I only made one profile, so it doesn't even, or it already pre-selected it for me, I'm already done there. But the axis is saying, hey, where do you want to revolve it? And we want to make it around this little spigot. And so as soon as we do that and hit okay, we have now made a delicious donut. Oh, beautiful. Um, with this donut though, uh, because it is such a simple mathematical shape, it is also available down here under Taurus. So if you wanted to make another one, if you want to say, hey, let's delete that, uh, an even faster way to make a Taurus is down here. We can say, all right, uh, let's work on uh, that top section there. I want to click there, pull it away, click again, and then it's already made a Taurus. And now I just need to say, what is the inner diameter? We can absolutely make that as large as or as skinny as you'd like. And then we can also play around with the torus diameter as well. So really simple shapes like this are very, very easy to work with because we can say, hey, I want a box, cylinder, a sphere, a coil, a pipe, all things that you'll come across pretty, pretty often uh, are already readily available. So we'll click and delete that. Uh, another one that I use very, very often is something called a sweep. Uh, this is where we can make a profile and then a path for it to follow. So if you wanted to make a paper clip or a spring, this is exactly how you would do it. Uh, it requires us to make two different sketches though in two different planes. It needs a path for it to follow and then a little profile, let's say square or a hexagon for it to follow all the way around. So let's make a little path. So I'm gonna say create sketch and I wanna make something on the top plane right here. And for this, we're gonna be using, uh, let's use the spline tool. This is the fit point spline. Uh, this is a little tool where you can click multiple points and then it will try and form a mathematical curve that passes through all of that and we can fluctuate and change all of it uh, to make it as interesting as possible. So let's click on the origin. And I'm just gonna click in a couple random places. And as you can see, the more points that I have, the more kind of crazy and tight it gets. So let's click that little green check mark right there and then hit escape. 
and then we can adjust all this. So this blue line, this is the shape that we made and all these little green uh, tendrils coming off it. As you can see, this is how we can uh, kind of twist all of that little features in there. You can also click and drag uh, the little points to move it around, but that looks just fine for me. But the really important thing is I made the cent or the very beginning of a line right at that center point. So let's say finish sketch. Um, and now I want something to follow that path. So I'm gonna make a new sketch. Ooh, whoops, I actually made it on the wrong section. So as you can see down here, I now have the sketch, of, which is what I made. And then I have a blank sketch right there, which I, I actually don't really need. So I can right click and then delete this sketch. All right, let's do it for proper now. Let's make a correct one. So let's go create sketch. I want to make it on the front axis. Uh, and let's make a circle that follows this. Let's go center diameter circle. And I don't need it to be all that big. Let's say 20 millimeters. Hit enter and then finish sketch. That's all I need. I've got my profile and I've got my path. Now I'm going to, whoops. Uh, now I'm going to go into sweep and it's saying, what is your profile? Well, this circle is my profile. And then my path is this right here. And it has made all of this. It has followed all those contorted areas and you can play around with this as much as possible. You can even say exactly how long is this path. So it is a very, very powerful tool. And as soon as you kind of notice all this, you'll notice uh, a ton, tons of uh, different things around the world that actually use this little sweep tool. Um, and very finally, uh, we're gonna open up a new tab and we'll make something using the loft tool right here. Now Loft is uh, a feature within 3D modeling, which uh, previous to CAD existing, it's actually impossible to make uh, accurately with just handheld tools. This is purely just a machinable uh, or a mechanically machinable part. Uh, and what it does is that it says, I want to make a certain geometry on the bottom, a certain geometry on the top, and then I want to make a 3D structure that actually, uh, well, contorts to all that shape. It's almost like, right in the middle, I've got a rounded rectangle and it. As I move through the cross section of it, it's changing to both those shapes. But what we need to learn about this is we also have uh, the construct tab up here, which is a long list of things that I really don't use, uh, but we're gonna be making a new plane. Instead of working on the front, top and right, we're gonna be making a brand new plane. Uh, so let's make something on the bottom. I wanna make a hexagon transform into a circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and go create sketch. Click this top plane here. And let's make a polygon. So I'm gonna click in the very origin, pull this away. Uh, I don't really care about the size of it all that much. So let's just go ahead and make it uh, by clicking D on our keyboard. Let's make this, uh, yeah, let's go 50 for no other reason. Uh, hit escape as well. But it is still blue because I can twist it around. But let's say I want this line to be perfectly horizontal. I can click the horizontal vertical constraints, click that top line, and then everything is defined. Good to go. Uh, but I'm done at this stage, so let's say finish sketch. And there we go. Now I want to make a circle just a little bit higher on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click offset plane right here. And I am gonna be clicking the top plane, but now I can make a brand new one. Let's make it 100 millimeters tall and hit okay. Now we've got something or a plane that we can click on and then work in between. So I'm gonna say create sketch and now I'm gonna say, let's work on that plane up top. Then we're gonna make a circle, click the very origin. Again, I don't really care the size. We can call it 50 and then hit enter and then say finish sketch. And this is great. Now I've got two sketches that are floating above each other. And now we're gonna make a loft between the two. So loft looks a lot more complicated than it really needs to. Uh, basically just working with the profile section. So I want to loft the circle to the hexagon and then hit okay. And now we have this brand new shape. It is a hexagon on the bottom, circle on the top, and if we do something called section analysis, 
we can actually take a look at it through all of the layers. You can see right in the middle, it's kind of this rounded uh, hexagon. And as we go lower and lower and lower, those points get sharper and sharper and sharper. Looking good. All right. So that is going to finish off the create section, but I absolutely recommend you guys just playing around with that and just making random stuff. Hey guys, thank you very much for checking out our intro series to CAD modeling using Fusion 360. If you'd like to learn more about Fusion 360 and all of the exciting projects you can make using this tool, then consider investing in yourself and your time by purchasing the rest of this course where we'll work on CNC projects, photorealistic rendering, animated moving models, and much, much more. Within this program, you'll be following a cohort of fellow makers while working in weekly group sessions where you'll be receiving help through curated Discord servers, weekly office hours through Zoom with our fellow CAD class team, where we can answer any questions you may have, along with up-to-date PDFs and videos to assist you along the way. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the next one.